In an eerie world of deep dark dungeons, mystery and magic seem real. There's good against evil with the all new Dungeons and Dragons Strongheart the Good Paladin and War to the Evil Fighter 50th Anniversary Edition Action Figure. 50 years of Dungeons and Dragons commemorating with retro toy deco and modern articulation. You can be home the all new Dungeons and Dragons 50th Anniversary Strongheart and War to Action Figures. Each come with multiple accessories, each sold separately. New from NECA. It's 10 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm Robo. This is a very special Marvel edition of the Rewind, I guess. But we're gonna kick things off with a little DC. It can't all be Marvel all the time. Nothing too earth shattering. In fact, a lot of you are gonna look at the McFarlane Toys DC Retro Gold Label Entertainment Earth Exclusive Batman 66 Joker Blacklight Edition Super Califragilistic Expialidocious. You're gonna look at this and go, Meh. And that's okay, it's not for you. This is for the people who enjoy this kind of thing, who have been buying the Blacklight editions from Entertainment Earth. You have to admit, they do spice it up quite a bit with the elaborate packaging and the stage with the lighting rig and everything. It, it feels special. But a couple of things here, the shoulder and the elbow joints not being made out of the same glow material, it comes off as kind of a crime scene investigation. You know, they're going over the body with a black light and finding fluids. It's always fluids on those shows. But then there's also the $29.99 price tag. Now other offerings like this have been that same price, but it's also all been DC Multiverse. And since it's DC Multiverse, that means more plastic, it's a larger scale, more parts because of the extra articulation. You know, everything that comes along with being a DC Multiverse figure just in party colors. This is DC Retro. It's a smaller scale. It's a dumbed down articulation scheme. It's a cheaper price point at retail. But then again, it's Cesar Romero Joker. It's an exclusive. It's just a way to get a little more mileage out of some factory molds. That's so, it is what it is. Seems like we've been getting the Rage Toys Samurai Force summer teases for a good long while now, but that's over. Pre-orders are up. And yes, it is just as amazing as we thought it would be. In fact, it may be better than we thought. We'll get to that. And I've made this joke many a time over the past couple of years. This is not the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Michelangelo. This is an anthropomorphic turtle in samurai gear who just happens to share traits with another popular franchise. That's it. It's purely coincidence. But if you buy the completely separate custom kit, you yourself in your own home can make it look more like that popular property. That is not on Rage Toys. That's totally on you. In fact, this is labeled Rave Toys. It's not even Rage Toys. It's a completely, if, if you have a problem with it, go after Rave Toys, not Rage Toys. And I have to say, Mikey, or I mean, Summer may not be my favorite turtle, but I'll be damned if this isn't my favorite figure in this line so far. And that becomes a problem. And it may just be a personal thing, but this almost makes the previous figures look not, I don't want to say bad because they are fantastic. To look not as good by comparison. You know what I mean? There's engineering upgrades that Spring and Autumn don't have. Yeah, I'm talking about the double elbows and the mobility that comes with that. I think one of my only gripes with Spring was his elbow could only go to 90 degrees. That's not a problem here. They're also pinless. Now, with a single hinge and swivel elbow, there's no pin involved, but you get down to the knees, which were double on the first figures, the pins were visible there. They did a good job of hiding it by making it, it pretty much the size of the hole and then texturing it, but it's not big. Now, you know that pinless isn't a big deal to me. I can take it or leave it. But if you're gonna have four figures all standing side by side, it's better to have a match. I think what's happening is just the time between releases. It, there was spring, there's autumn coming out right now. I don't even have mine yet. And then summer's gonna be later. During those waits in between, they were able to go, oh, well, we can fit double elbows in there. Or these colors will work at the factory, stuff like that. Maybe the vision for the line has changed slightly as time has passed. But I'm not saying that the figures are bad. I love spring. I think I'm gonna love autumn. 
but I really, 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 really like Summer. I keep <laughs> trying to say Mikey and Donnie and Leto because they also skewed away a little bit. The first two, very samurai. Here, not. it doesn't have, well, I'm sure there's gonna be an accessory set later down the road to add to this, but as of now, I do like the, the little metal piece and then the mask part and the top knot. The wrist crossbows are... And then the big old grin TMNT Michelangelo head is just icing on the cake. It just captures his personality so well. I do notice that they only have one picture of the swinging nunchuck accessory, and even then it's behind his back. Is that because it plugs into real chain and it just kind of droops when it's up there? Maybe you can take, since all the sticks come out of the real chain, maybe you can take, maybe there's an adapter? something to just put the stick into the spinny thing and then he can hold it anywhere i don't know i'm just going by what i see at the moment either way it sounds like i don't want this figure to look as fantastic as it actually does that is not the case i just think well this looks like this are they going to go back and do some tweaks on the first two how are they going to look all together is i guess my big question Maybe that will alleviate any doubts I have at the moment. Plus, by the time, who's left? Winter. By the time Winter's shown, where are they gonna be at design-wise? Is he gonna have all kinds of improvements? Because I, if I remember the silhouettes right, it's gonna be bigger than the rest. Hmm. Again, I guess we'll see. Little bit of Kyoto Amazing Yamaguchi news. Uh, they announced that Uraraka would be the next character in their My Hero Academia line. Kind of surprised me. This property has cooled down quite a bit from what we saw a couple of years ago. So to release a main character this late in the game, now that I say that out loud, it probably makes sense. Uh, we've seen toy lines before where they save the major players. That way, they're still cells, and then they can sprinkle secondary characters in between. So forget what I was about to say, but mostly because I didn't say it. So forget what you assume I was gonna say. And just, I, this is a good get if you're collecting the Amazing Yamaguchi line. If you have a display going, you gotta have your avidity. And I think at this point, Amazing Yamaguchi has the most filled out lineup. If I remember correctly, there was McFarlane, there was Figma. Was there somebody else? and then Amazing Yamaguchi, but they've done... I think I may know. Do I ever know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. Either way, we're gonna find out more about this in a few weeks, I guess, along with a re-release of their Midoriya that came out three and a half years ago. Is that right? It's been a while. Hasbro with the surprise drops this week. Let's start with the G.I. Joe Classified Series Tiger Force Wreckage and Tiger Paw ATV. I didn't read that because there were so many words. It's just that I am very unfamiliar with Tiger Force and Wreckage and then vehicles. My G.I. Joe's as a kid was the main cast and then, well, we've been over this a million times. This is essentially the most recent Firefly within his classic look with most of the accessories from there, and then the Cobra Ferret, all repainted, all nicely redone to be over on the Joe side of things. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That is G.I. Joe spanning all the way back to the early days. That's the essence of the property. That's the spirit. No, that's spirit. This is wreckage. Now, I don't know wreckage at all, but because it's a, a firefly slash beachhead slash whoever else is in this same type of gear design. I automatically love it because there's just something about that, right? There's a roughness. There's a danger. So this is tempting, but not super tempting because I've strayed away from Tiger Force that doesn't use the cringer camo. I can't help it. I'm still a sucker for the green and yellow. I love that. But this is good too. Like I said, there's a meanness to it. And then you get up to the face and it's got that skull saber tooth look to it. The teeth that from a distance just looks like some camo or some mess that you can't quite tell what's going on there. You get up close. Oh, oh. And then the ATV is a fresh new mold. Of course, we're going to get more releases of it. 
And again, I've strayed away from Tiger Force, and I didn't quite like the RAM in this same design scheme, but I think it totally works here. Maybe because the eyes in my brain is in the correct space, the fade, and then it's just a good looking mini vehicle. It's just a new badass addition to your Joe team. That's the bottom line. That's where we're at. It is a Target exclusive that went up on Pulse first on Thursday. Their pre-order sold out in about 20 minutes. So there was a scare. It was like, when the hell's Target gonna put it up? You never know, cause Target ends up, it didn't take too long to go up on Target site where it sold out again. So maybe there's something to this whole Tiger Force thing. Target says it ships in July. Pulse says it ships in October. That seems like a big window. Maybe they'll come back into stock. I don't think it's been really tough to get a lot of this stuff. So if you're really wanting this, you're, you're waiting with bated breath or maybe unbait that breath because it's a pretty good possibility. I, I don't know if unbated is proper. Is that, is that the opposite of bated breath? <laughs> unbated breath sounds weird, doesn't it? Sticking with the surprises, we also got the Hasbro Marvel Legends Giant Man and Wasp 2-pack this week. And by got, I mean it was announced, it was available on the Pulse site, it shipped out. That is amazing. That is something that we don't experience a lot these days. It's just, we're so used to, well, there it is, gotta put in a pre-order, wait out the three to nine months, somewhere in there, okay, pretty, pretty pictures. I'll get the actual toy later. What else you got for me? No, it is refreshing to see something, to purchase something, to receive something, and then you enjoy it while the hype of announcement is still going. It, I just like it. I, I, I want more of that. Give me more. Now, Janet, we had seen before, I think in a digital render reveal to say, hey, when we did the HasLab Giant Man, there's a wasp coming, okay? Eh? Hold your horses. But we didn't know everything it was coming with, like hands and the unmasked head, which is beautiful. It looks great. Is it unmasked? Unhatted. Un... Insect stinger end. I guess I've never thought about that before. Is the point on top the other end of a wasp? Hmm. Then Wasp's other accessory is a regular sized Hank Pym Giant Man. Well, I say regular size, you know what I mean. 112 scale shelf, this is the Hank Pym you want if you want him the same size as other characters in the display. Not Giant Man sized, the HasLab size. The unmasked head seems to be the one that came with the West Coast Avengers Hank in that box set. And then you have the soft goods lab coat, you have science stuff to, to allow Hank to do science things. And then there is a shrunk down Quinjet. I forgot to mention this last week when it was teased at WonderCon. I was gonna swing back around and go, well, I wonder where we could get that. Now we don't have to speculate. It, it's, it's right here, it's in this set. I'll probably take that and give it to the West Coast Avengers Hank because I associate that look, that version, as the one to shrink things down and stuff them in pockets. And then when he needs something, it's just like So if you skip the HasLab or you like to have Hank in all the different versions, here you go. It's available right now. I can't get over that. It just hits different. Maybe they'll announce more of that next week during their fan stream. Maybe we can get, oh, Excalibur Phoenix just pop up on Pulse and Hey, yeah, give me now. Uh, I'll have it within a couple of days. Finish out that team or Feral. Somebody. Hmm. Sticking with Marvel from here on out, the next Sentinel fighting armor character is Sam Wilson, Captain America. We've talked about the majority of this body over and over and over and over because they've been using at least the upper arms and upper legs since the line started. There's also a lot of reuse for the forearms and the lower legs too, but that also sees some unique sculpt every now and then when uh, certain designs call for it. There's stuff like War Machine that has big chunky bits that go there and there. Uh, Loki or Thor has a cape hanging off their back, but this is the first time we're seeing wings. And then of course there's unique torsos and heads. So here we see the star that is very appropriate for this costume. And then the head, even though there's a faceplate to protect 
the face, the eyes, and everything, there's goggles on top of that for no other reason than it's the style of this costume. But you know what? It works. You know what works even better? I think the most eye-drawing thing for me is the color scheme. The reds, the whites, the blues. It, it's... But then you realize, oh, that's Captain America's costume. It is unmistakably Sam. Red Wing pops out of a perch on the back and then goes onto a stand for flight poses. That stand also doubles as a shield throwing. Not effect. I was going to say effect, but it's just the shield. Goes on the stand, looks like Sam threw it. And that's where I wish things were a little bit different here. They could have went with Cap's shield design, which I don't... Is that fairly new? Because here they're reusing Steve's shield. Then again, when Sam first took over the mantle, he did just use Steve's shield for a while. Plus, like I mentioned, the whole basis for this line is reuse. So, I don't know, it, it works, but it would have been nice to have something a little different. And then as always, in the grand tradition of 80s glamour shots that Sentinel themselves started way, way back, here's Sam at his high school prom. I touch you once, I touch you twice. Finally, <laughs> it's no secret, I love action figures. I love model kits. I love Spider-Man, so why wouldn't I finish this rewind off with the Moto King Marvel Infinity Saga Iron Spider model kit? We saw the Grayscale prototype for this back in October at an overseas show, but you gotta admit, it looks way better in color. And that's the kicker here, it's a model kit but it comes in all the appropriate colors. Well, okay, that's not really out of the ordinary. Most model kits have the base colors, and then even Bandai's done small little details and unmasked heads. But here, the gold trim, the blue spots, everything is there. As far as I can see, not having previous Moto King model kits, you snip out the parts, you put it together, action figure. I looked it up. In the movie, the web lines don't appear to be painted in. I think it's more cinematic shadows. So I think it's accurate that the web lines are just grooves. But if you want them darker, you can throw on a wash. You can take a Gundam marker to it. Something. It's a model kit. You can do what you want. I also feel like the Waldos are going to be awesome on this release because of the weight of the material. I think one of the biggest shocks when I started doing action figure model kits was picking it up. After years and years and years and years of solid plastic or heavier materials, picking up an action figure model kit's like, whew, it almost flies out of your hands, hits the ceiling. Ah. These aren't going to droop under their own weight because there's hardly any weight. I don't know if you'll be able to get him posed up on them, maybe depending on how tight the joints are, I guess, but they're gonna be in position. They're gonna stay in position. That's another plus here. It seems like this Spider-Man's gonna be very poseable. The ankles seem a little round, a little ball-like, toy-like, for lack of a better term, but the rest seems to be integrated fairly well. Only sticking point may be the size. It's listed at 16 centimeters, which translates to six and a quarter inches. That's a bit tall for Tom Holland Spider-Man. But then again, the Dark Knight Batman was listed at 16.5 centimeters or six and a half inches. I don't have that kit, but from what I've seen, it matches up perfectly with the Metacom Mafex Dark Knight Batman. And that is not quite six and a half inches. So maybe there's some fudge room in there. Maybe they're rounding up like we see with some import companies. Maybe I'm just trying to look for a silver lining because I want Spider-Man model kits. I don't know, I'm treading carefully because it may be the same situation with their Miles Spider-Man. Model King posted updated prototype shots in various poses just to show off, hey, this can do a fairly nice looking four point crouch. It's also absolutely packed with accessories, a lot more stuff than we've seen other versions of this figure come out with. There's the big base that I forgot to mention that comes with Iron Spider 2, a platform to plug things in to display the figure after you're done possibilities. But again, the size may be a thing. This is listed at 15.5 centimeters or six and an eighth inches. Is this an older version of Miles? Is he supposed to be taller? Is he supposed to be this tall? 
does it match anything? I don't know. Going back to the Batman kit, I am hearing great things. So I want to try Spider-Man. Do I start with Infinity War Spider-Man? That seems the closest to release. And then is this the next one? Because do I go for it? Do I wait for it? Or do I wait for their newly announced Spider-Man 2099 model kit? These companies are killing me. Didn't I just talk myself into the Medicom Mafex Spider-Man 2099 a couple of weeks ago? And then boom, here we are with another great looking rendition of a classic Spider-Man 2099, but with a lot more going for it or a lot more coming with it. Lots and lots of hands, a Spidey Sense attachment for the head, several web options, the big base, a Lila hologram wrist clip, and five heads. At least I think there's five heads. There's the normal ones shown on this page and then four different ones shown on, I don't know why I'm calling that into question. It's a simple one, two, three, four, five. There's not as many options as the Mofex when it comes to the back wing web cape thing, but there's more options when it comes to the front part, the, the part you see. So, ooh. plus I get to build it. Oh, that's a win, 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 win. Will this go for pre-order before the Gwen they showed last year along with the rest of these? And then there was Superior Spider-Man with Waldos. So many decisions to be made. I don't know what to do here. I want them all, but I've got to try one to clear some things up. Or I'll wait for somebody else to get one at, to clear up the size. That's that's the biggie. Are these going to be bigger? But they're also Spider-Mans. They're going to be swinging up above or crouched down, crawling. Could I get around it? And that's all I have for this week. Again, nothing from Yellow Park. I, and I'm not just talking about news announcements or more pictures. I'm talking about shipping notice on my YOLO Park Transformers AMK Pro Series Optimus Prime model kit. I almost feel like they've seen this or somebody's told them about this. I don't know why. I'm a little guy in a big, big, big pond. But if we don't send him his Optimus Prime, he'll keep talking about it. So don't send him his Optimus Prime. And I end up talking about it again because they haven't sent me the Optimus Prime. I'm falling right into their trap. As always, much, much love. Special, special thanks to the Patreon. The, uh, the moon in my night sky. I did stars last week, but they're the moon too. Just shining down. I didn't get to do as much this week as I have. It's been a crazy week. There's a lot of stuff going on. But in that crazy week, well, okay. I started at 11.30 p.m. I did binge the first five episodes of X-Men 97, finally. Well, I say finally because I've been teasing for years that I'm gonna go back and watch the X-Men animated series from the 90s that I didn't watch a lot of back in the day, but I've never done it. So I thought, if I haven't watched that, why would I jump into X-Men 97? But all the, the posts and the tweets and the comments about the new show kicking ass I couldn't help it so I started it thinking well if it grabs my attention I'll watch the rest of it this weekend and there I was 2 30 in the morning going what I need more of this right now I need more cartoon I need more toys I need more X-Men stuff in general I need more cartoon is this what y'all been talking about all these years because I get it. I finally get it. I guess it, I, it does push me to go watch the original show a little more, but I'm almost afraid to go back and watch it because of what I've put in my head now from what I've gleaned from comments in X-Men 97, you know, what's happened beforehand because no, I'm not going to get into spoilers. Maybe we'll do a live stream or something and talk about that. But it's not just the characters showing up or what happens to the characters. It's little things. There's a scene in the last episode where Magneto is in the, the, the boardroom with Moira and Emma Frost and Sebastian Shaw, Banshee, others, just talking. And there was a shot that pans back. Or I don't think it pans back. It's just a glass with ice in it, with with a liquid, a drink of some kind. And Magneto's talking, or somebody's talking, I can't remember, because my 
focus went to this guy because the ice cubes. And I thought, you know what? That is such a little thing to throw in there that it didn't have to. They didn't have to do that. It just added something to the scene. It was stuff like that throughout all five episodes that just caught my attention. Cinematic things. I, I, I love it. I haven't even watched the new season of Bad Batch yet, and I'm already looking forward to X-Men. What can I say? Star Wars, Marvel, when both are kicking, then I don't know what to do. <laughs> That's all I got. How am I supposed to record with all this racket?